A reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah. Shout for joy, O daughter Zion. Sing joyfully, O Israel. Be glad and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has removed the judgment against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You have no further misfortune to fear. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion, be not discouraged. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty Savior. He will rejoice over you with gladness and renew you in his love. He will sing joyfully because of you, as one sings at festivals. Verum Domini. letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord always. I say it again, rejoice. Your kindness should be known to all. The Lord is near. Have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Verum Domini. Amen. 
The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. Dominus Fobiscum. Et ut spiritus tuum. Lexio Sancti Evangelii secundum Lucam. Gloria Tibi et Domine. The crowds asked John the Baptist, What should we do? He said to them in reply, Whoever has two cloaks, should share with the person who has none, and whoever has food should do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they said to him, Teacher, what should we do? He answered them, Stop collecting more than what is prescribed. The soldiers also asked him, And what is it that we should do? He told them, do not practice extortion. Do not falsely accuse anyone and be satisfied with your wages. Now the people were filled with expectation and all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Christ. John answered them all saying, I am baptizing you with water, but one mightier than I is coming. I am not worthy to loosen the thongs of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand to clear his fleshing, threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Exhorting them in many other ways, he preached good news to the people. Verbum Domini. Today is often referred to as Gaudete Sunday, and it comes from the Latin meaning rejoice. We wear rose-colored vestments today, and you'll notice throughout the prayers and through all the readings, there is a constant theme of joy, to rejoice. And Pope Benedict tells us that even amidst our doubts and difficulties, joy exists because God exists, and he's with us. And the Holy Father gives us good guidance as we prepare for this great feast, which is coming in only nine days. He said, I know that people have many commitments, but getting ready for Christmas does not only mean shopping and making preparations. It means being in contact with the Lord, going out to meet him. I feel it is important not to forget this dimension. This is not an additional burden but the power that enables us to do all we need to do. And I hope you maintain permanent contact with Jesus, that his joy and strength might help you to live in this world. And if we do get caught up in the busyness of preparations for Christmas, prayer can seem like a burden, but no, that's where our strength and joy truly lies. And why do we rejoice today, especially during Advent and is in fact a penitential season? We rejoice because the Lord is near. He is near. But as our Holy Father tells us, again, it's not so much a question of space and time, but rather it's a question of love, because love draws near. And we see in the Christmas mystery the face of God, who has revealed himself to us in the infant Jesus. And it's a source of joy for us that God chose to make himself so close to us by dwelling among us. It's not only a season, this Advent season, to prepare for our Lord's coming again at Christmas, 
But again, also, we receive him each day in Holy Communion. We prepare for his second coming, which we know is certain. He will come again. It's also a great time to prepare for when the Lord will call each of us to himself. And this waiting shouldn't be one of fear as well. But if we do keep in mind trying to live each day as if it were our last, that can be a great preparation. That we not live, that we live each day to the full. That we might not have any regrets. Saying, Lord, if you were to call me to yourself tonight, help me to be ready. To live each day joyfully. We have everything we need. And it's not only, again, a source of joy that God will come again, but he's with us now. He's with us in times of suffering and of rejoicing. And he remains faithful to us and will never abandon us. And authentic Christian joy is much different from the happiness and satisfaction that the world has to offer. And this can be seen in the witness of the saints. Even amidst their sufferings, they maintain a spirit of true and authentic joy. That's something, again, the world cannot offer. Look at the life of Blessed Teresa of Calcutta, who we know now suffered many, many years of interior spiritual darkness. And yet she maintained that great smile, that interior joy, despite the trials, despite the sufferings. And look at all the saints. Mother Teresa would say that being happy with God means loving like him, helping like him, giving like him, serving like him. We imitate the Lord and follow the gospel and the Christian life, and that does lead to true joy. Pope John Paul II warned us that if people make an idol out of happiness, which is possible to do, they lose their way, and it's truly hard for them to find the joy of which Jesus speaks. We can seek that emotional high. That's not what true joy is about. We go on to say that, unfortunately, this is what is proposed by cultures that replace God by an individual happiness. Mindsets that find their emblematic effect in seeking pleasure at all costs and spreading drug use as an escape, a refuge in artificial paradises that later prove to be entirely deceptive. Again, our joy is found in God alone, who's the source of joy, who's the source of all life and everything that is good in itself. And that deceptive joy which the world offers us is not the joy which is the fruit of the Holy Spirit and dwells within us, and that joy which God desires each of us to possess. Rather, the joy that we have from living out our faith is one that endures. Remember, our Lord told his apostles, your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take your joy from you. That's how Blessed Teresa of Calcutta and the saints persevered in the midst of trial. And think of the many martyrs who laid down their lives with serenity and joy. That's impossible without God's grace and the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Again, our Pope John Paul II said in an Angelus address that Christian joy can go hand in hand with suffering. And why is that? Because it's based on love and giving of ourselves for the Lord. And again, we can look at St. Paul, who we heard in the second reading today. He wrote his letter to the Philippians from prison. And what's he say? Rejoice. Again, that's impossible without God's grace. The uncomfortable living situation that he was in didn't take away his joy. And he obviously didn't receive his consolation from what the world has to offer. He received it from the Lord and by being faithful to him. And St. Paul knew that the Lord was near and that God would not cease to provide for him. And for our part, we can ask, as we heard in the gospel today, the opening lines with the crowds asked John the Baptist, what should we do? First of all, persevere in the Christian life and living our faith. If we're living in a state of sanctifying grace, God right now is dwelling within us. That is the source of all joy. And any unhappiness we experience in this life is from distancing ourselves from God and by falling into sin and lukewarmness. And if we have distanced ourselves from God by falling into grave sin and we've cut off God's own divine life within us, we've cut off God's grace, we can experience that great joy again by simply making a good confession. Joy, therefore, is possessing God. And misery or sadness is losing him, again, due to our own fault. 
So as we continue this holy season of Advent on this Gaudete Sunday, may we not cease to wait with joy at our Lord's coming, his coming among us.